In part three of setting up nodes for Bitcoin, I'm gonna download the Bitcoin Core um, wallet and just get it synchronized and just prod around and show what I see um, when I get into it. So first up, we'll go to the download Bitcoin Core. Now I'm going to, um, I'm gonna be downloading this onto my own computer and so I'm gonna prune it um, so that it doesn't take up too much uh, space. Um, but by all means, um, if you've got a large enough hard drive, you can download the entire blockchain, which I believe is about 330 odd gigabytes right now. Um, and that is much better to be full validating. So a prune node only just basically, um, it checks everything, validates it, and then prunes off a majority of the transactions to keep it, to keep it light. So... I will download a Windows EXE, and so that's going to down, download. I'm going to drop it into a specific um, Bitcoin Core file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut and wait for this uh, download to finish, and I'm going to boot it from that particular Windows uh, file. Now that I've saved uh, Bitcoin's um, setup and into the into a Bitcoin Core sort of file, just just on my D drive. I'm just going to boot it up. Oh, a smart screen it says don't run. What is this? More info. Okay, we want to run anyway, so yes. It seems like Windows doesn't like it, does it? Okay, a fresh install. Yes. Uh, no, we want to, I want to change that to... I'm going to change it to my D drive and put in my Bitcoin Core. Where is it? Wallet. Okay. And go next. And I will do it like that. That's fine. And so we'll just uh, unpack it. And we're one. Bitcoin Core. Okay. Now, obviously, in this file, I've already, um, I already made made one file up just called um called bitcoin blockchain that way i can um i can dump it all in there once it uh puts it in there so first time as this is the first time it's launched download a copy of blockchain um you i'm going to use the custom data directory and i am going to go to local d bitcoin core blockchain like I just said before and go discard blocks after verification. I will do a prune so I'm gonna I can, I'm gonna, I can prune it straight from the get-go so that's what I'm gonna do so this initial synchronization is very demanding and may expose hardware problems um, with computer that has previously gone unnoticed each time you run Bitcoin Core it will continue downloading where it left off if you have chosen to limit blockchain storage, pruning, uh, the historical data um, must still be downloaded and processed, um, but will be deleted afterwards to keep your st this storage low. So that's what I'm intending on doing. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to fill this uh, uh, this computer up with 320 gigabytes of uh, of blockchain data. I just want to kind of keep it to maybe like like 10 or 20 max at this stage in time. So I'm going to boot that. So this is obviously the first cover of uh, the Bitcoin Core um, wallet there. And of course, this is the latest version. So um, what do we got? Uh, we want to allow access. So it wants to try to block it at every stage, doesn't it? Okay, so what you're going to find here. So um, just for reference, I'm doing this on the 9th of July at 9.36 p.m. And... I'm going to figure out how many days it does actually take to synchronize because these when it says sync, it's, it's, it says down the bottom here syncing headers and it will also um, go to a stage where it starts to validate blocks and as you can see there it says 11 years and 26 weeks behind this is what it says down here so this wallet as I said before it's going to download and validate every single block from all the peers um, from every computer it's going to bring them in. It's not going to download it like a movie or anything like that. You know, it doesn't doesn't rip it down in a, in a few hours. It takes 
it piece by piece and validates the block and then moves on to the next thing. And that's what that's what slows everything down. So it's not just simply grabbing as much information as possible. It's actually checking everything as it comes in. So that's that's the time consuming part. So I'm when I when I did this to my to my Intel NUC, it took seven days. Um, but this computer is better than what the NUC NUC is, so I don't quite know how long it is, and that's why I'm um, recording the time. So I'll leave this on overnight. We'll see it. We'll see how it goes. Um, uh, where it gets to. Um, but my prediction is going to be, let's say, one and a half to two days. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe three days. We'll see how we go. Um, but the NUC was seven days, and. I found that it went quite quickly to about 2016. Um, when it hit 2017, that was when it slowed down. That that part like took three to four days. So only the last few years uh, it got really really heavy. The early years are very very fast. So I will I will have a look through it right now. So you can actually hide this. Obviously, um, this wallet's not ready to use at all. Um, there's many discussions on Bitcoin Twitter just the other day about you know making this you know, making this this GUI um, which is a graphical user in, in, gra graphical user interface a bit more um, noob friendly, um, but it still is generally um, pretty simple, um, but it doesn't quite work the way most other you know light wallets work these days. You don't get um, you don't get twelve words. You actually have to you actually have to encrypt encrypt a file and just put in a a, a dot dat file somewhere on your computer and then then make a copy, put it on your USB stick, throw it in your cupboard, you know, another USB stick, you know, take it to someone with with it who's got a safe, etc. etc. But it doesn't actually spit out um, you know, twelve, eighteen or twenty-four words, or anything like that. Um, but it is a good idea, I would say, to encrypt it that way. Um, if someone gets a hold of that DAT file, they can't just put it on their drive and just open it straight up. So if you do encrypt it, they'll, they'll need a password to be able to open it up in, in the first place. Um, so uh, as much as as much as I'm sure the guys who are doing call um, probably don't um, really my, mind um, having that sort of setup right now, I. I personally think that for new, new users, they're going to certainly want those 12 words, you know, 1218 or 24 words to come in sooner or later, hopefully. Um, now, down here, this is an indicator of um, this little spidery looking thing here is a bit of an indicator of how many connections um, there is to the um, to other nodes on the Bitcoin network. Um, so... I believe if you click that, you can kind of kill all the connections, and if you unclick it, it comes back to life. Um, this little BTC symbol out here, you can change um, what type of units it is. So you can change it to Satoshis, or you can change it to Mbits, or uh, or just bits. But uh, I don't, I really don't think anyone, apart from some OGs, um, wish to use anything apart from actual Bitcoins and Satoshis these days. So. I think the new generation um, don't really want to use those ones in between. Um, so this is um, generally there's just basically um, a send. So you can uh, you can input an address here, and this is just this is all grayed out, just giving you examples of what what's going on there. And um, and you've got receive. So you would have to um, you would have to. Uh, just label a few things here put a message in put a label in and then create receiving address and it will um, produce a, a new address for you to send it to um, and of course um, all your transactions do get logged right here and I haven't yet to see what to do with this export thing but obviously we can probably export it to a to a, a, a an excel file so um, up in here there's not many things in here so we've got create wallet open wallet um close wallet so um we've got backup wallet that that'll be where i will if you go in there and you and you click on that you can go and um nominate where to put your uh your dat file um so i will do that uh a bit later but for now i'm just bruising i'm cruising through it so encrypt this is where you put in your password 
um, which you know something I could I can show later. Um, we've got in window, we've got saving addresses, uh, we've got co console, network traffic, and peers. So these these four come up as a bit of a tab um, together, so that you can actually view all things. So in this information here, we basically it, it's running off all of the uh, the info. So what the client version is was twenty point up twenty point point zero. Um, current number of blocks is zero because obviously it's it's only syncing headers at this point in time, and the, this is where the memory pool is. So this, one of the things that I questioned a few people at the beginning, and I didn't really get it many straight answers, was where is the mempool? Where is this this fictional mempool? And it took me a while to actually go out there and find out where the mem mempool is. I got a lot of people say, I don't know, don't know where it is. The truth of the matter is the mempool is in everyone's node. So everyone who runs a, comp a, a computer or a Raspberry Pi and runs a node, they store um, their, they store the full blockchain on their hard drive, but also on their RAM, they'll store um, a collection of all of the, um, of all of the incoming transactions uh, that obviously get they come in and get validated and just sit in the mempool. And so effectively the mempool is in 10,000 computers around the world. Um, so yeah, that explains where where the actual mempool is. I, I didn't quite know where it was. I didn't know if it went, went to one place and then they all collected from it or not. But this is this is yeah, this is the new noob question you gotta ask yourself. But effectively when the transaction gets broadcast from from your wallet, it goes it gets transported to every single node across the network and then gets checked by those nodes and then sits in their mempool until of course um, the nodes which are actually you know tied with a mining mining farm they'll mine it put put that put those transactions in a node and obviously when that block gets transmitted to our, all the other nodes those nodes will say okay this one got checked off and they'll basically just you know they'll, they'll just say this one's pending um, whereas the other you know if the transaction didn't get into that block they'll say these ones haven't been pending or something along those lines um, okay so it looks like here the synchronization is just kicked off so all the headers have been um, have been collated and we're up to 3,000 and yeah 3,200 um, blocks right now so it's validating the first couple of blocks very very fast and I uh, as I said before, I'm hoping that obviously they are pruning um, each block as it comes. So they're all um, cleaning up. Um, console. Now this is, I had a bit of a play around with this. Um, you might need to um, to learn a little bit about the actual, um, about the particular um, uh, command lines. But I believe that they are written in some, somewhere. I'll have to find out where they are, sorry. Okay, so this is um, so this is network traffic. The, once once the initial um, block download, the IBD, that's IDB. Um, when, once that once that first um, finishes, this the this 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 large green zone is going to flatten right out. So this this right now is basically downloading a whole forest of um, of of blocks from from other nodes right now. So that's why the red line is very very low and the green is very very high so it's basically downloading as many of those blocks as possible to get it into the system and start to validate it so once it once it levels out um they'll they'll sort of spike the red and, and green will just spike together and they'll stay somewhat um uh, similar um at this point in time it looks like i've got uh, six nodes who are connected to me? Well, it was a seventh one just then. And from what I've learned online, is um, these pings actually give you a bit of an idea of how far away some um, some nodes are. So this seventy six one must be must be somewhere in Australia, um, whereas this one, who knows, it could be somewhere over in America or maybe maybe somewhere who's got a very bad internet. Um, so that's what I. Heard online. So, so what else we got? So that's validating there. What else we got? I got help. Oh, it's just command line options. What have we got in here? So, 
So we got a we got a bit of a, a list of um, some command line functions in here that you'll be able to enter. Um, but yeah, I will have to come back when I when I find some of the best ones. Um, I will come back and I will display them. Um, yeah, to be able to assess it.